In the first two modules, we've been focusing on getting you to use macros to produce mathematical results. As an academic exercise, it's very useful, but practically, there's one huge shortcoming. Consider the following. This macro is very similar to the ones we produced in the very first module, where one cell, in this case cell B5, cells 5, 2, is cells 1, 2, B1, add cells 2, 2. So 1 add 2 should equal 3, and if we play the macro, indeed it does. Another way you can calculate this is to just use a formula within Excel. The advantage of the formula, which is shown in cell C3 and written into cell B3, is that if we change cell B2 to 3, the value updates to 4. To update our macro, we have to open Visual Basic Editor, find our subroutine, and press play. That isn't always practical. So in this module, I'm going to show you four different ways in which you can start subroutines. These are the four most common ways. They're not the only ways, but you should be able to do pretty much everything you need to using these four methods. The first method involves giving a user a button to click that runs the macro automatically from within the spreadsheet. So the way to do this is to first get the toolbar up on the menus which contains the different buttons. So if you go to View, Toolbars, Control Toolbox on Excel 2003, you then get a variety of different options. A Command button is the one you're looking for. If you click on a Command button, you can then draw it within Excel. So I'm going to put the top left corner where the cursor is now, hold the cursor down, drag it to here, and we have a command button. If we right click and press properties, you will now see a lot of different properties that this button has. They all have their different uses, but the main one to focus on here is the caption property. That controls what the user sees. So instead of it saying command button 1, we should write a message select to add values. We can see that the caption doesn't fit within the button, so we can either increase the width of the button, or alternatively, at the bottom where it says word wrap, you can change false to true. That's like in an Excel cell. You can make the words wrap round, which we've done here. So now you've got a nice button which says select to add values. But it doesn't link to any code. So to link it to code, you can right click on the button and click view code. That automatically produces a subroutine called command button one click in this case, in which you can command Excel to do something. So what I'm going to do is using the copy and paste techniques learned in module 2 simply select the code from sub edition and copy it into the sub for command button 1 click. You may notice that next to the play button there's a pause button and a stop button but there's also this extra button just to the right. Now that's design mode. That means that you're adding buttons to an Excel spreadsheet. When that's selected, you can't actually click on any buttons because Excel assumes that you want to change their properties or move them around the screen. To get out of design mode, we very simply hit that button. And if we go into the spreadsheet, we can now type in a new value, such as 2 in B1, and select to add values. The solution comes out as 5, and we don't have to mess around looking in the code window as before. Alternatively, we may not want to mess around rewriting code that we've developed or copying and pasting code in to apply when a button's hit. Therefore, it's possible to call one subroutine from within another subroutine. The way you do this is very simply to write in call and then the name of the subroutine, which in this case is addition. So now when we run command button one click, which we do by pressing the button, the code gets to this line call addition and skips to the other subroutine sub addition. It then runs that completion which will perform our addition for us. Once that's done it will go back into command button 1 
and complete any remaining steps, in this case there aren't any, before ending the subroutine. Just to demonstrate this still works, I can type a 3 in the sheet here, select to add values, and I get the answer 6. These are both useful ways of firing off macros. However, in this case we still have the shortcoming that we need to remember to click the button. To get around this problem we have to introduce a different sort of macro. This is one that begins any time there's a change within our worksheet. As you can see we're within sheet X1 at the moment and we're writing code into this particular worksheet. We can start writing the code with the following notation private sub worksheet underscore change then in brackets by val or one word target as range that may seem rather complicated and it is one of those things you're just going to have to learn this macro will now run every time anyone makes a change to the sheet we're looking at so we can just call addition as we did from the command button and now we should always get a solution. So now if I type a 5 in the spreadsheet it automatically updates the value to give us 5 add 3 equals 8. However that isn't quite the full story because we have to think about what the code is actually doing. Every time the worksheet changes it has to call subaddition here and then it puts a new value into B5. Now imagine you've got a spreadsheet where B5 changes every time that addition takes place. When we run subaddition, the code fires us back into the worksheet change event. That means you can get stuck in a perpetual loop where a subroutine starts when changes are made, but that subroutine makes changes which then start the subroutine all over again. Therefore, we want a way of telling Excel Visual Basic to ignore any changes that are made after the initial change. The way to do this is to add extra lines at the start and end of the macro to tell it to ignore any subsequent changes, and then right at the end we can tell it you can start looking for changes again. That means if somebody makes a change in the spreadsheet later, they will still get the benefit of the code you've written. So the code for this is application.enableEvents equals false. I think you can imagine that disabling what are called events would stop us getting involved in a perpetual loop. But what you need to do at the end then is enable events again. So then you application.enableEvents equals true. You may notice that these various drop downs come up from Visual Basic Editor when you're typing things. That's just to aid you by telling you which options are available for different commands. So now I've shown you three ways of starting macros. There is one other way which is very often useful. That is actually to run a macro when you first open a spreadsheet. So far we've been writing code into specific sheets, so this is sheet x1. We could also write code into sheet x2. But you can also write code into this workbook. That means that whenever changes are made to the workbook as a whole, a macro will begin. In this case, the change we want to consider is when the workbook opens. So this is private sub workbook open. That's it. And when we open the workbook now, this code will run. The main reason I'm showing you this one is because we've been discussing enabling and disabling events. Now we always want events to be enabled when we open the macro, otherwise our macro which sums 5 add 3 or 6 add 3 or whatever is in cell B1 and B2 won't work. Therefore we need to put in here application.enableEvents equals true. One final observation you may have is that the notation we've been using has been varying in what we call subroutines. We've had private subs and we've just had plain subs. Essentially subs are routines that you can call using lines such as call addition from pretty much anywhere. They're relatively accessible. 
The only time you should want to use private subs really are when you're using buttons or when you're relying on worksheets changing or workbooks opening or various events that can happen within the worksheet and these will have standard notation which I will show you should you need to use them. The final thing to show you in this module actually concerns modules themselves. At the moment we've written code in sheets and in the workbook, we can also write them in their own self-contained areas. The way to do this is to go to Microsoft Excel objects, right click and go insert module. A module is very simply a page onto which you can write code. In this case we can cut and paste our addition sub from the sheet to somewhere which is accessible by the whole workbook and now we can see it still works. That would be of use if we had multiple sheets all of which required us to perform the same kind of function.